Good morning everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Aphrodite's Child and it's fairly early in the morning. It's like five past four in the morning. I was unable to sleep so I just thought I would do a, a book haul on Greece and Roman. And the first book I'm going to start off with, with today is a classical mythology and it's by Arthur Cottrell. Sorry if I'm not pronouncing his name right. And it's um, The Ancient Myths and Legends of Greece and Rome. And this is one of my um, mythology books that I have. I actually um, I bought this one um, from the charity shop. I have bought uh, numerous things um, from the charity shop. And um, I have bought um, vases and um, statues from charity shop. I don't like to spend quite a lot of money on statues. If I can buy them cheaply from the charity shop, then I will. Or I'll just like make like pit collages on, on mood boards um, as like standing statues. But when I do have the money, I do buy um, statues. That's one of them. The second book I'm going to show you, which I bought from Amazon for £4.99, is Greece and Rome Myths and Legends. Now this picture of, if you're a soft polytheist like me, you'll see gods and um, goddesses as the same one, like like Dionysus Bacchus, Aphrodite, Venus. Um, but this picture actually went into auction and Suwin actually bought it for like quarter of a million. I saw it... Um, on Facebook of, of a post and um, it is a beautiful picture and to know that someone actually owns this picture now is absolutely incredible and it's by um, Bracken Books and the author is by H.A. Gruber it is quite of an old book it's like from 1985 this book but I can recommend it I've read some of the myths in there and because I also like hearing about their Roman counterparts as well um, and I just think that Greece and Roman work so well together and I do think that um, that even though that you know it, when you're soft polytheist like me you'll see it as like like um, gods you know being like the same one and like having the same myths and things but um and I, st I I mean I do believe that the ancient Roman religion does have its own identity but you can also really feel kind of like a Greek vibe in there as a soft polytheist I, I do feel I do feel quite a lot of Greek things in there obviously with with who with you know with who I am but it it does have its own identity as well which generally does need to be come across as well but um this is one of them I also have Edith Hamilton's mythology, Timeless Tales of Gods and Heroes, which is the 75th anniversary edition. Now, my granddad actually bought me this book um, from Waterstones. Um, this book is absolutely beautiful. As you can see, it's got like gold inside. And I really do like it. As like... Um, I can't see because of the camera quality, but it does have like the sacred um, Asian Greek keys inside of the of the book, and this is what. And I'll show you some of the artwork in here, which is absolutely beautiful. I can literally find any. Oh, here we go, I'll show you this one. This is what the artwork looks like in this book. Isn't that just beautiful? Do you want to see my... Um, it's, it's, not, it's not worth anything, but I'll show you anyway. It's from 1985, I won it off eBay. I call it my lucky note. <laughs> it's from like 1985, like the old very old greek money and actually won it from ebay and it's got like a picture of apollo at the front and on the back of it is the olympic games <laughs> so i just thought you just um show you that <laughs> yeah um 
There's a little history behind this book. Um, Marilyn Monroe read the original in 1950. And, um, you know, some people kind of speak like badly about this book, saying that, you know, that, they're re that they regret having to open this book because how badly written, you know, the, the writing is but me me personally I don't see it as a problem I see it as a book that I would really recommend out to people and, um, and Marilyn Monroe owned this book in her library um, and she read the original in 1950 when the original book came out which you can actually still get on eBay and Amazon but I got the 75th anniversary edition but yeah she actually um, owned the original copy of it now this book this book I recently rebought this book but this is the book that I had from back in 96 that when I were a kid <laughs> Which I rebought, um, and it took me ages to find, but I managed to find it on eBay. And it's Gods and Myths of Ancient Greece: The Archaeology, the Archaeology and Mythology of Ancient Peoples. It's by Mary Barnett, and I had this book when I was a kid that my nana um, bought me when she were alive, and. Um, the imagery in this book is amazing like if you just see here like the artwork in it's just absolutely an amazing book and it has like a map and it has this beautiful imagery now this mountain is um was one sacred to Dionysus I mean these pictures you could actually just meditate upon it's absolutely just stunning and I can recommend this book it is from 96 but I still read it because it is like connected to my childhood like when I first found out about the age about the Greek gods growing up as a kid and even though that I um went into you know christianity and then from christianity i discovered wicca then i discovered kemeticism I was in kemeticism for three years but i was always like watching about the greek gods reading about the greek gods and generally um the the are part of um my childhood and i will go into more detail about that in, a, in another video but that's one of my childhood books <laughs> which I did recently rebuy from eBay. <laughs> and this, Clash at Titans, what an iconic film. I actually won this from eBay with um, a DVD and a poster, which I will show in another video. But this book is to do with the film. It's a book to go with the film. It's by Alan Dean Foster. As you can see, it's quite of an old book, but Clash at Titans, can't be it. Another book that I'm actually going to share with you is Natalie Haynes' Pandora's Jar, Women in, Women in the Greek Mess. Now, this book can really, really help you um, on your journey, especially if you want to know about the Greek women and myths. Because what Natalie Haynes has done, she's actually taken them out of the Greek myths and actually spoke about them to how they actually should be seen. Because the women in Greek myths generally come across as like villains and, you know, dangerous, monstrous people. But they generally are victims of um, certain things that have happened to them. And... Um, now I'll talk about a myth, the Pandora. Now Pandora is the ancestor to two women. She was the first woman that got created. And um, Christians would see it as being Eve as being the, the women of ancestors, but for those in the Greek religion would know there's Pandora. Now Pandora um, is also, I found I find her really fascinating. And when I read about her in Pandora's Jar, I was like, oh my God, this actually makes sense. 
Pandora has been labelled as someone that brought plague and evil and violence and whatever in the world and by opening up her jar that she got given and um, and letting all chaos and everything out into the world and she really, really got hammered. She really got hammered with it. And when you actually read this myth, it, from what Natalie Haynes has said, she generally makes you feel so connected to these Greek women that areas of your life where you feel like you have someone to turn to and like when you read them it's like ah interesting so the way she went and wrote Pandora was that are we a lot safer inside Pandora's jar than out where hope remains in Pandora's jar which actually makes sense that with all the evil and the violence that is in the world and hope remains in Pandora's jar when all, when, when all that is happening, you know, do we, are we a lot safer in a jar than out? I would see, I would see that as a yes because we are safe in Pandora's jar where hope remains. We need, hope keeps everything alive. We need to remain hopeful in really bad situations that things will get better. We have to believe that. So I can really recommend this book. Now, I'm going to show you um, the Odyssey and the Iliad translations that I have. So this is the Odyssey, Homer, translated by Emily Wilson. This is the Penguin. Uh, no, sorry, it is. Uh, it is the, by, no, um, yeah, translated by Emily Wilson. It's a Norton book. And as you can see, it has these really nice edges there. So the I actually studied the Iliad and the Odyssey at uh, uh, Scrapton University, which is on YouTube's YouTube channel, and I will link it um, in the video below. So this is one of the translations that I have by Emily Wilson. It was shown in one translation. I do have another translation by Robert Fagels, which I used that one as well as the Iliad of Robert Fagels to do the study at Scranton University because I also studied Homer at the same time uh, whilst also learning the ancient Greek alphabet um, a few days before that so I was doing a lot of studying in a matter of a few days and um, which in, um, in another video I will talk you through the ancient Greek alphabet and from what I've of what I learned because I do know it off by art so, as you know, the Odysseus story is about the journey of Odysseus, you know, after being in the Trojan War and he has to travel home to his wife Penelope and Emily Wilson takes us through that journey. It is a really, really beautiful book. My other one is the Iliad, which is um, a new translation by Carolyn Alexander. Homer. Now she is the first woman to translate the Iliad. Um, is Caroline Alexander? I can recommend it. I mean, you should always when you choosing um the Odyssey and the Iliad translation, you should always go with the translation that you feel is suitable for you because not a lot of translations are going to be easy to read for everybody. So I've got a, a couple of translations um which I would which I personally recommend. Um, which I which I find easy to read. So this out one, and this is Iliad Homer by Stanley Lobardo. Now this is a really really easy translation to read if you're struggling with the writing style of Robert Fagels and Caroline Alexander. I can recommend Iliad translated by Stanley Lombardo. I'm actually um, reading through this and I really find it so easy to understand. It is a really, really good read. And this is obviously Iliad, which is about the Trojan War and uh, about Ach Achilles and Patroclus. So this is a translation that I can really recommend if you're struggling with the other writing styles of, of, other, of other authors. So these are my beautiful, do excuse me, these are my beautiful penguin books that I use to study um, the Iliad and the Odyssey at the Scranton University um, on YouTube. 
and these are translated by Robert Fagel. And as you can see, it has these beautiful edges here. These are my these books here. These are my prior possessions, as well as um, Emily Wilson's. These are my prized possessions of the Iliad and the Odyssey. I just love the style of these books, and I really, really love Penguin books. Anyway, um, Penguin books are my favourite books to read. So I can recommend these two, which I also used these two for study. Um, to be honest, from my personal experience, even though I do like the Odyssey and I did actually really like studying that, I thoroughly enjoy studying the Iliad. The Iliad for me has a lot more, um, a lot more happening because obviously Odysseus is on the way home from from um, from the from Troy from from the war, so I do. I, I did prefer studying the Iliad, but I do also like the Odyssey as well. So now we are getting on to... I'll show you my Aphrodite collection, because I've got Aphrodite um, books which can help people on their journey. I'll just get them because they're right at the top. This book... Aphrodite Venus, History of a Goddess by Bethany Hughes is one, I should say, the most book that I generally would read again. This book is absolutely fantastic. It's one of my favourite books in Aphrodite Venus. I remember when I got it and I had it all written in a matter of like, I had it all read in a matter of five days. Um... This is one of my favourite, favourite books. She also was an author, uh, or she also wrote um, Instable, which is about, um, I think that thing that was about Turkey. But yeah, yeah, I had this all read, sorry, in a matter of five days. It's one of my favourite, favourite um, Aphrodite Venus books ever. Absolutely one of my favourites. She really, really goes into detail about the history of Aphrodite and really explains everything so thoroughly that that, that when, when you read it, everything is such in great detail that as soon as you put the book down, you really want to start reading it again. It's one of them books that you literally cannot put down. It's such an amazing book. It's absolutely amazing. One of my favourite books in Aphrodite. And it's um, Venus Aphrodite, History of a Goddess by Bethany Hughes. This book you can get on eBay and Amazon in your local Waterstone um, bookstore that you have if you've got one in your hometown. But I can recommend it. Brilliant book. Next one is Pagan Paul's Aphrodite Venus. Uh, Encountering the Goddess of Love, Beauty and Intuition by Israel Moon. This is another well thought out detailed book. Um, she really explains um, her experiences with Aphrodite and um, and helps others and can really assist you on your journey with her, like what to offer her, her, um, her, um, her dates for celebrations and she it's just a really planned out journey on really connecting with the goddess and rituals you can do and it's a very well thought out book and can recommend it my next one that I have Aphrodite's Magic by Jane Meredith sorry if I'm not saying her name right and she's also the author of journey to the dark goddess this book i actually got for christmas from a really good friend of mine who was actually um a priest of avalon and he got me this book now this book is about aphrodite's girdle which is like a belt and it takes you through the stages of how to make it and it is a fantastic book i can recommend it i'm still getting through reading it because I've only just I only just got it for Christmas 
and so this book is really getting in touch with your like your sensual side and with the help of Aphrodite to give like be an acceptance of your body to love yourself um to not listen to kind of like um people when they start to run you down is to know your self-worth and it, this book can really help with confidence building I can recommend it now this which you may also see in my other two videos is the homeric hymns which i have as you can see the hymns are quite long <laughs> so i really really do want the orphic hymns which i can recommend this book if you're interested in the homeric hymns they are beautiful hymns so and i actually won this on ebay so i can recommend that my other books that i have is I'm going to start with, um, I'll carry on with the ancient Greek stuff. <laughs> oh, no, hang on. I have um, others here. I have Lunasus, a devotional to Selene. Now, this book was an absolute pain to find. I literally had to search and search and search, but I managed to find it. Um, on Amazon and this is all about a devotional to Selene you've got like hymns you've got rituals you have um, poetry that you can read to it it's a fantastic book I can recommend it I've used some of this when I've celebrated um, room celebrations for Selene I've read a poetry I've done rituals to her and I've read hymns out to her so this is um, a fantastic book if you're wanting to start worshipping Selene if you're looking into Celine, if you're working with Celine, can recommend it. It's a great book. Now this is an absolute dream. It's Hellenic Polytheism, Household Worship. Now this book really has been such a great help to me on my um, Hellenic journey. And I actually read it all from the preference page to the end of the book. This is the book that I recommended out the most to people that were starting out in the Greek religion and it's an absolute dream. It has all the celebrations in, um, it has rituals and it really goes into detail even about when, because um, I think at the time when this book was written, um, the Greek religion wasn't, de wasn't declared in, in Greece as like an official religion. Um, and if, you, if you're interested in knowing about that, I can actually recommend um, a program on YouTube, which I really find fascinating. It's the Greeks, it's called The Greeks Who Worship Zeus. And it's, and it really, really shows just how, in that video, how unfair everything was to how they, to how the Christian Orthodox were refusing the Greek religion to happen and it isn't really up to them to decide you know which Greek which religion should be official which one shouldn't they were saying that when they were going out Christian orthodoxes they were saying that when the Hellenics um the the Greeks who worship the Greek gods were like doing their rituals their their costumes were coming across as like Halloween and I was like you know, I was like, this is so ridiculous. If people can't be accepting of other people's religions, then they need to just be quiet. Because at the end of the day, people are entitled to believe what they want to believe. People are entitled to follow what, who they want to follow. Not everyone's going to be a Christian. People are going to reject the mainstream religion. And, you know, I think that this is all generally the mess of Constantine, really, because he declared uh, Christianity as a mainstream religion. And, um, you know... Um, and if anyone is interested in paganism, paganism is alive and well. It recently, um, in the United Kingdom, uh, pagans had to fight um, to get paganism as one of the as um, an accepted religion. But luckily, they got it. We did actually, we did actually win that win that one. Took a while, but we got there. So now, in um, schools in the UK, you can legally take your child out. Um, to, to drum up the sun for summer solstice legally because it's now class an official religion it wasn't before but pings are to fight it 
but you know this book is such um a really really helpful book and I can really recommend it for those that are starting on the Hellenic journey I can really 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 recommend this book it's fantastic now this one the Greek magic of Parian translation now I do ancient Greek magic and when I was in Kemeticism for three years I did ancient Egyptian magic I do write my own spells and I do also write my own rituals and um, my own prayers. Now, some of the, the spells in this book I will not recommend to do because you can actually get arrested for it. Um, but it's a really good insight to how the spell was back in the day. It includes like Christian spells, Egyptian spells and Greek spells. It is a really, really, really good book to own. But just be careful when you, um, you know, to not really put, to not actually perform a lot of these spells because you can actually get arrested for it. That's how bad these spells are because it's everything that was done back in the day. Um, so, I can recommend that. Now, this one, the Oracles of Apollo, is practical ancient Greek definition for today. Now, the same author of this book, he actually wrote another book as well called um, Hellenic Polytheism, which I am looking into. Now, this, um, the Oracles of Apollo speaks about the different definitions you can do. It actually speaks about his Delphi, uh, Delphi maxims, and it also um, speaks about, you know, his birth and his history. And um, it's a really, really good book. I can recommend it. And as you can see, it's got the ancient Greek alphabet in there. The Oracle of the Seven Sages. And it actually um, speaks about all his... Um, as you can see, it's all his maxims in there. So, good book. I can recommend it. Now, um, this is the ancient Greek history. And this is Thieves, of Forgotten Sea of Ancient Greece by Paul Cartledge. Now, this book really gives a voice to the, to the Boeotians. And you generally, when the way that Paul Cartledge writes is that he gives them a voice. He gives them. He gives them speech of to how they would want to be heard, and I haven't finished this book yet. But from what I've read so far, it's absolutely fantastic. I can recommend. It speaks about um, the battle that they won with Sparta, and Sparta are like the, the like fantastic, like what they're like, you know brilliant and then the thieves um won the battle with sparta and that is just incredible and i'm really glad that they're getting the recognition that they deserve fantastic absolute fantastic they really really need need this so i can recommend it thieves have got to see of asia greece paul cartledge now these two that I have, which you can buy at your local WH Smith store, is Greek mythology, explore the rites and rituals of the ancient Greeks, and we have the ancient Greeks, ancient Greece, sorry. Um, explore one of the history's most influential civilizations. So this speaks about the myths in Greek mythology, where this more goes into like the history of the of the ancient Greeks, you know, ancient Greek, ancient Greek life and culture, war, mythology, life and society, where this one kind of explores, it does explore about ancient Greece, but it mostly talks about the myths, um, as you can see. And it retails at £9.99. So it's like ten pounds. So they are quite expensive books, but I see these in mostly like a set. Me personally, but I can recommend in this one. It's 
Greek and warship. So it kind of takes through like the history of ancient Greece. So that's them. And this is Olympia. Now this book I actually won a fee base was a Christmas present. <laughs> and the artwork in here, which I'm going to show you, or well, not artwork like like pictures is just stunning look at that isn't that just beautiful and there is actually um if i can find it oh here he is apollo apollon <laughs> I, lit I have this statue, this one I have in the kitchen, I have this statue, it was a pound from the charity shop was this statue, that's Olympia, it's quite an old book, it's um, from um, did I just say when the date's from, as you can see kind of old I'm just trying to see there's no date on this where it's actually, when it actually got written so I can't really really mention um, but you can get it on eBay and it takes you through like the history of Olympia um, about the Olympic Games about the temple about the temple of Zeus that was there so it takes you through the history of Olympia which anyone who's interested in, in Olympia and ancient Greece, I can recommend this book. It really goes into detail. And this is what I got for Christmas. I mean, I've had a flip through, but um, I will get sat down to read. But what I've actually seen so far of it, it's got, it's got my attention. And I love Olympia and, you know, I love ancient Greece in general. Um, that's another one that, that I have and this book The Hamlet Cup again by Bethany Hughes Socrates, Athens and Search for the Good Life I actually watched a documentary on the Hamlet Cup which then got me interested in, in getting this book now this book is a story is a life of Socrates and um and we think the way we do because Socrates thought the, thought the way he did. So, as you know, the Socrates is one of the famous ancient Greek philosophers. And um, he gave people like another way of thinking. And um, so this book takes you on the life of Socrates and from when he was born right up to his death. As you know, that Socrates died from the Hamlet Cup poisoning, and um, and Athens was one of well, Athens was a very important place to Socrates. He loved living there. And actually, Socrates is a picture of Socrates where it actually looks like my granddad. <laughs> Believe it or not, he actually looks like my granddad. Just Socrates in I saw a picture of him like in one of the do the documentary that I watched and he actually does look like my granddad. <laughs> so this book I am getting through. I'm on chapter eighteen. It is a fantastic book and it's the same author that wrote um, Aphrodite Venus. So and I can recommend her books. I've actually got another one of hers uh, that I ordered. It's the story of Helen of Troy. Now I actually worship um, Helen. You know, I was actually wondering whether she was actually worshipped, and she actually was worshipped in Sparta and in, Tro and in uh, Rhodes. And so I will go into the detail of Helen, and I, I also worship Andromeda and Perseus as well. And also in Helen and Polytheism, I worship the Twelve Olympians, and um, I also worship Dionysus, Aphrodite, Aphrodite Venus, and, um, and other deities as well so i can re recommend this it is a fantastic fantastic book 
The other book I'm going to talk about is Sparta's by Paul Cartledge and Epic History. This takes you through the history of Sparta and the life of the Spartans. As you know from the Spartan women, they generally had more freedom than the ancient Athenians did. Because the, the, the Spartans were allowed to, Spartan women were allowed to, um, you know, do, do a lot of things Athenian women couldn't do. And this also takes you through um, the Spartan life. And it also speaks about when the Spartans actually took the Athenians to, to war when they actually did nothing wrong. So this is another one of Port College books. It really goes into detail about Spartan history. And he really, really brings it to life. He really, really brings everything to life, how it all was back then for the Spartans. He really goes into such detail. And I got this book from Waterstones, and I can recommend it. It's a really good knowledge on Sparta if you're interested in wanting to get to know about ancient Greeks, and I can recommend it. This is another one of... Uh, my books that I have. This is The Young Alexander Making of Alexander the Great. Now this one is talking about when Alexander was young and new evidence has been found and it's a very very popular book and it's by Alex Rosen. I actually got this one from Waterstones because I really wanted a book on Alexander the Great and I did actually attend a lecture on Alexander the Great which is run by uh, Egyptologist Chris Norton when I was in Kemeticism I attended lots of his lectures during lockdown and um because it was also in the middle when I was doing diplomas in ancient Greece um sorry ancient Egypt and ancient Egyptian magic and I also did a diploma in hieroglyphs which I did quite well in because I, I passed all of our certificates in, at the end and then I won an award from Centre of Excellence. I won um runner-up learner of the year award for 2020, 2021. My certificate's in the kitchen, so I will show you in the next video. And um and I watched Alexander the Great movie, the original, so many times that I generally wore wore out the disc. So I had to go and rebuy another 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 copy but this is um this speaks about the life of alexander from when he was a kid like new evidence has been found and um it's a very very popular book i know that waterstones recommended it to me i'm still piling through because as you can see it's a very very big book so if you're interested in alexander the great this one and I can also recommend um, Alexander the original movie and also the remake with Colin Farrell in and I have watched the original and the remake after straight after and I've done that with Clash of Titans as well I've watched the original Clash of Titans and straight after Clash of Titans and after that, the Wrath of the Titans so I had like a Clash of Titans moment and I will speak about in other videos of um about Clash of Titans, the movie, and um, how the worship with Pegasus started. So I will go into detail with that. So that's one. I'm going to do a very last book because I have quite a lot of books and there's also going to be a Roman book haul as well. And we're already on like 38 minutes, so I really don't want to keep you here for any longer. Um, and plus it is quite late but um, I will show you just another book and the rest I will do on another video so let me have a look here what have I got this is a weakness of mine I absolutely love Greek vases I absolutely love I was on um, a site called Amino which it isn't for everybody because a lot of people would see it as not being reliable as much as it makes itself out to be and I got that impression but it, I'm going to leave it to your own personal choice so if you want to join me now pigs and witches it's entirely up to you but I'm no longer on that site anymore because I mean I'm not hardcore and I don't take myself too seriously. Like I can have a laugh with people. And um, 
and I generally you know like when I come across people that are when I've spoken to people that are kind of like hardcore and things they generally um make me feel like I cannot be myself sometimes and I really got that impression on Amino and and I was like I need to be free and speaking to how I need to speak because someone's not hardcore so I, I left but I did do a post on Greek vases and it is a weakness of mine I just generally love Greek vases I find them absolutely beautiful I actually went to York Museum um, which is because obviously Roman Britain um, which I will go to that subject so I know quite a bit about the Asian Romans and um, they had a full cabinet of Asian Greek vases and I was like oh my god I was literally in a dream that museum it literally took my breath away and I took loads of pictures of when I was there. But this book I actually got from eBay, which speaks about how the vases were made, the sort of um, vases um, that were made, what they were used for, what they stored in them, drinking vases, um, the history of the painting, why certain designs got made, what they're about. So it really takes you through a vase journey. <laughs> so... I can recommend it. It's a stunning book. I actually got this from eBay. And it's by Andrew J. Clark, Mary Louise Hart. And they've there's a couple of stuff on there that they've done also. I'm looking at photographs in the same series. And it kind of um takes you through. I can recommend it so I'm actually going to end this video here because it is quite late and as you can see I still have I'll give you a sneaky peek all I have to go through because I really want to do a book haul for a while so um I don't want to keep you guys here any longer so for those that have been subscribing to my channel thank you very much and I'm going to say good night now because it's like quarter five in the morning and I've just done all this book haul for you <laughs> So, um, I hope you have a lovely day, night, wherever you are, and I will speak to you soon. Bye for now.